If you are in the state illegally, there should be nothing given to you that says you have any legality whatever in the state of Arizona. It's an important bill, and it says if you're in the city or the state illegally, we will not issue you anything that adds to your legality. The constituents of the cities that they live in um, to potentially use for, I, I take it, library cards to pay for utilities. Um, here in the city of Phoenix, which is one of the cities that I also represent, I'm pretty close to this issue. And this issue is more, how, do, how does the, the population of Phoenix really streamline their efforts to actually be able to pay some of their utilities? Um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, people have to pay to live, um, whether they're documented or not documented. I just think that if the cities are wanting to do this, and this is what the constituents of those cities are asking for, what's so wrong with that idea? It's, it's like the state trying to tie additional hands uh, for a city trying to provide better services to their constituents. So I want to bring your attention to me. Um, I was undocumented, in your words, illegal. And why this is important to me is because I never have committed a crime. I stand before you as a colleague, as a peer, and I'm very concerned with the language that you've used in describing this ID. Excuse me. There's a sign out front that, that talks about the behavior within committees. And the behavior in here is you are here to have an opportunity to speak and uh, to have that public opportunity. Uh, but you'll need to keep it down or I'll clear the room. And, and, then, and then you won't have an opportunity to speak. Okay. My understanding of this ID is that we do have many people that live in the shadows. <coughs> and as hard as it is to believe, there are also many LGBTQ uh, transgender folks um, that identify as something other. We also have a large number of um, folks that are homeless that have no way of... Um, Excuse me, uh, Representative. <clears throat> My apologies. What, what, no, no, no apology necessary. Um, but what we try to do in yeah. committee is to stay to remain to the bill. And, and you're getting a little bit off topic. So if you could, if you could, uh, and, and you know, I would say that to everybody in the audience as well, is, is, is speak to the, the bill itself so that we can, you know, hone in on that. Um, but again, this identification is not a valid state issue or federal issued form of identification. I trust that other government entities uh, would know and understand that. And then my final question is, there are other municipalities that have this form of identification, like New York City, um, which I believe they've not had issues. Representative Lawrence, would you say that public safety is uh, a concern of yours? Mr. Chair, of course. The reason I ask is, Mr. I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair, Representative Lawrence. Um, the reason I ask is because I am married to a police officer. And when my husband makes a stop, um, they ask for identification, and it's very important to identify the person being stopped. And at times, the person may not have a form of identification for whatever reason. This form of municipal ID would give the opportunity to allow that person and the police officer to identify. <coughs> and I guess my point on public safety <coughs> is, do we want to live in a community where people who do live in the shadows and who are afraid are given the opportunity to report a crime um, if they've been assaulted uh, physically, sexually, um, if they're homeless, however, or do we want to uh, not have those crimes reported and dealt with? Mr. Lawrence, first of all, your police officer husband, upon seeing this ID card, should arrest the individual. In the old days, under Sheriff Arpaio, when a person was found and was in the country illegally, 
they were turned over to ICE and returned to their native country. Your husband, if they have no form of ID, should be arresting them. Um, Mr. Vice Chair. Well, please make it a question, not a statement. Uh, well, the question, since I did reference New York, I apologize. Do you know how many other cities outside of Arizona and outside of New York have the municipal IDs? Los Angeles, Mr. Chair, Los Angeles, Thank you. I believe, has a municipal ID. Both of those, pardon my editorial comment, both of those cities voted for someone other than Mr. Trump who would clamp down on those in the country illegally. Employee ID cards and library cards. Here's the, another problem with the bill. In the city of Phoenix, we have all these cards, city cards right now that, except for the library card and employee card, would be impacted. And what you're looking at is golf carts, you're looking at uh, Metro passes for light rail and buses, senior centers. We even take your water bill in Phoenix as an ID. But that's only to do business within the city of Phoenix. It's not meant to use it elsewhere. Well, with, with all due respect, sir, the Social Security card was never intended to use for ID. So it, now it is. Chair and, and Representative, the role of local government, I should say, of city government, is different from state and also different from the federal government. We're providing services to the community. And for, now, for, for example, um, we don't do that for electricity bills, we don't do that for cable bills, we don't do that, and I understand that's private sector issues, but we're providing water, we're providing public safety, we're providing uh, access to library, so on and so forth. If you're a resident of the city of Phoenix, you get the benefit of the services. So that is kind of a, a different approach to that. Good afternoon, Reverend Reginald D. Walsh, and I serve as a Commissioner on the Human Relations Commission for the City of Phoenix. I stand opposed to this piece of legislation, um, and I, the reasons are various. I understand the time is, is um, of the essence, but I want us to be clear. The City of Phoenix did their due diligence. What harm is it in having a municipality offer legislation for their city? which they govern, which they understand their best practices. I'm familiar with several of the members of the committee, and I'm familiar with the people that introduced the legislation. You stand for states' rights. Why not stand for city rights? I'll be ready to take your questions as well. Members, any questions? I have one. Ms. Blanc. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir, for coming. I'd like uh, more information on the process. Obviously, you sit on the commission, so this was a, an arduous process, and I'd like to know um, why you were okay with it. One of the reasons why I was okay with it is because I trust the process. The process came about, and it was a lengthy, pro lengthy process. Um, I don't want to get the numbers uh, misconstrued. However, this was not something that we just said oh, let's pull something out of the sky. We took our time with this. Therefore, um, it is almost disrespectful to those elected in the city of Phoenix to say that you don't know what you're doing. And other cities across the, other cities across the country, including the great city of New York, of which my wife is a, a native, right? Um, the city of Phoenix is a groundbreaking and a leading city in this country. And to say that it's unnecessary, one, negates the needs of an entire sector of the population. Two, it, it really goes against the, the creed of this country that that people have the right to services. Um, but to answer your question directly, the process was one where it came through several commissions, including the Human Relations Commission, um, including the, um, I believe, the Disabilities Commission as well. And so we took it, brought it forth to several of the subcommittees, and then it went to a vote of the City Council, which is a sovereign body of itself. And for this body to come in and say, you don't know what you're doing, it, it, it's a slap in the face to the hard work and to the, the millions of voters. Um, and if I may, and I'm not trying to be flippant, but 
city council district, city council um, districts in the city of Phoenix are larger than population wise than the majority of people that sit in this body. So just to let you know, more people vote for them than vote for you guys to get elected. Just to let you think about that. All right. Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, sir. I, I apologize. Is that your name, sir? Reginald Walton. Reverend Reginald D. Walton, sir. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you for taking the time to come before the committee. Um, did we have, um, I apologize. I had to go over and testify in one of my bills. I understand. And um, did we have, okay. And did we, did we ask anyone about it? <coughs> for, Mr. Chairman, sir, uh, again, I come back to this question about that uh, Arizona State offers IDs. Why do we need a separate another one? Why would why would Phoenix go above and beyond and try to, and produce this for actually more money than what the state charges for their state issued ID, which can do everything that this one can do? Mr. Chairman, Rep, uh, Representative Payne, the Thing about it, um, let me. I'm, I'm a preacher by nature, so indulge me. Um, quickly, please. Yes, yeah, very quick. But please indulge me, um, Mr. Chair, Mr. Payne. Uh, if you would, please indulge me. I'm a preacher by nature. Um, growing up, this country was founded upon an ideal called American exceptionalism. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very, I, I don't want to insult your intelligence, I believe that you are a very intelligent man, you, you've heard of this, uh, matter of fact, the president of this country ran on a slogan of make America great again, uh, why would we not go above and beyond if it's within our bounds to make sure that people have access? What this bill does is it punishes people for seeking access. And that's why the city of Phoenix went above and beyond, again, as a leader in this state and in this nation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Reverend, I, I guess I'm, maybe I'm, I'm pretty well read on these things, and I don't see where there's a penalty here. You're, you're saying that people are being punished with this bill. There, sir, there is no punishment. They still have access to <laughs> services. Uh, this is just another form, as, as we saw, in a long line, literally, of IDs that are issued by the city of Phoenix. So I, I think, forgive me, sir, but I, I believe that to say that people are being punished by this is a misrepresentation. Mr. Chair, uh, I'm sorry, I can't see your name. Fincham. Mr. Fincham, uh, that is correct. We, I, I was here last year. Uh, Mr. Fincham, um, the reason that I say a punishment is because of the, I, I, and, and, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but in reading the bill as it was introduced, it requires law enforcement <laughs> officials, it requires officials to report if they believe that a person is uh, illegal, and let me just perfect put this in the record, there's no such thing as an illegal person. All of us are God's children. I'm a preacher by nature, and I, I don't want to insult your intelligence, but we've heard illegal, illegal, illegal as a person, um, and there's no such thing as an illegal person. But to, to answer your question, to answer your question, um, the reason that I say a punishment is because there is part of this legislation that requires people to report on others, which which delves us into the slippery slope of McCarthyism. Um, and and I, I don't want to belabor the time going down that street, but that is what this what this bill begins to delve into. McCarthy is where, spy on your neighbor. Do you, uh, if you hear someone speaking Spanish. Sir, sir, sir. Yes, sir? As I mentioned earlier, we, we try to stay germane to the, the actual intention of the bill, what the bill is saying, and uh, you're, you're kind of taking us down a rabbit hole on that one, so. But with all due respect, with all due respect, Mr. Chairman, this bill takes us down a rabbit hole that if, if it is interpreted by the wrong person, it can take us into those extremes, which is what uh, hopefully this, this committee will vote to not allow it go, to go further and therefore avoid us going down rabbit hole. Thank you, sir. Um, we're, we, we actually were on the second person public testimony. Second person. Yeah, okay. A lot of we, we, you know, uh, I, I appreciate it. We, we have, as you can tell, uh, quite a few people here that are interested in this topic. 
So we'll probably need to um, uh, uh, go ahead and end comments and testimony from you at this time. I did want to thank you for taking the time to be here today. Though. That's no problem, Mr. Chairman. However, I did notice that there was one more question. And, and as the chair, I'm going to move it along to so that we have the opportunity because yeah, some of these folks might have to get home to families and stuff. We need to uh, keep moving this process forward. No problem. Thank you very much, sir. First of all, I am a citizen of Phoenix. I was born right down the street in the former, formerly known as Good Sam Hospital. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of anger and people being divided right now. And though I, I, I respect all of you and the people you represent, I, you know, as you know, it's so on the card, I am against this. And I was just hoping to give constructive, you know, criticism on it. Um, you know, I, I think that before we pass something so divisive, it would be nice to actually bring in the city leaders, and I'm suggesting you might do that, because I'm concerned as a citizen about crime in our city. I'm not concerned so much about uh, folks maybe committing crimes who are undocumented. What I'm concerned about is, in the area I live in, North Phoenix, I'm concerned that, that powerful groups of, you know, criminals are only empowered when people are afraid to call the police. Because it's like, if I call the police, am I going to get an officer that, you know, is going to say, well, unless this person I know is a felon, you know, I will, or am I going to get, they're going to report me, or vice versa, what if I get an officer who just doesn't like me because, you know, I'm undocumented and my skin color is brown. So, my main point is, we've got to stop this bill for now. I, I, I know that you probably aren't going to do it, but there's so much anger, there's so much division right now, and that's the last thing that our beautiful state needs. So I, I really, sincerely, with all due respect, and again, thank you for letting me speak, it, I just would not like this to happen, because let's let's have communities come together and discuss what we can do to make it better. I just, I just don't want a mother who is being beaten by her husband, being afraid to call. I don't want an officer's life in danger because the officer you know, doesn't even know who the person is, at least with the card, they might have a chance of doing that. So that's that's my main point. Let us let us not have this divisive bill. Let us have unity in this state and, and discuss this more. There's so much division in the world, so much anger right now. Thank you. I'm also representing NOVIAC, National Organization for Victims of Illegal Alien Crimes. I'd like to present to you the names of 73 innocent Arizona Americans, 58 who were murdered, permanently separated from their families and their loved ones, nine seriously wounded, and six rapes of children 12 to 15 years old. These are the reasons I ask that you support this bill. Thank you. Yes, my name is Judy Hernandez, and I am here on behalf of the One Phoenix Coalition, which is a coalition of hundreds of organizations that came together in support of the Phoenix Municipal ID that represent thousands of people. Um, and I know someone made a question earlier, Representative Lawrence, of who are some of the groups that, that oppose this bill. I want to talk about a lot of the groups that support this. It's a large coalition of different organizations. Um, there is on a coalition to end um, sexual and domestic violence, Equality Arizona, um, Center for Neighborhood Leadership, the Human Relations Commission, amongst many. Um, there's a lot of law enforcement um, agencies and groups that support a municipal ID. I'm here in a position of this bill because it limits our city rights, our community rights. We advocated for this for over two years. This is something that we see necessary for public safety. And similar to the concerns that were brought in earlier, um, not only victims of crime, but witnesses of crime that are not calling because of a lack of ID. And to a lot of the questions that were made, there are several, there are several, several individuals and constituents of yours that cannot access a state ID due to your own policies. So there are a lot of veterans, there are a lot of homeless individuals, there are a lot of women, there are a lot of people that cannot access the requirements that currently are there for your primary identification. So that's why the need of a secondary identification were put forth. Um, also, to address some of the questions earlier, there are several reports that demonstrate how this type of initiative in cities has really 
made the community safer, has increased public safety, has increased participation from communities. Um, and on, like, on the other side, people who are supporting, there are no reports that say what, this, uh, what municipal IDs have had any negative consequences. So I just want to put that forth. Um, there are, again, thousands of individuals represented by hundreds of organizations that have come out constantly in support of it. And I would like to ask, actually, if there are people here who also join us in opposition of this bill to please stand up. And madam. And also take a step forward. Everyone sit down, please. <laughs> no, I'm just saying to see the room that is yeah. in opposition for this bill. Madam, you're, you're kind of out of order in, in uh, how, we, how we run our committees. So, but, but thank you. I, no, I just want you to see your constituents that are here well, and spending my, the time. And, and my assumption is that most of the folks sitting out here are, are probably uh, uh, like minded. Well, that would be my assumption. Yeah. But, that, but that, that's not. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, then my last point on that right, um, is that this is very blatantly a racist um, bill. From what the representative was, uh, Lawrence was presenting, Madam, very blatantly Madam, racist. Madam, and if I were you, I would not be taking Madam, any options from um, yeah, our pile. I think your time any is advice. up. I think your time is up. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and Chairman, yes. Chairman, may I just say that when witnesses fail to follow the appropriate decorum of our hearing. It does not make a good impression on the, on the representatives who are going to be voting on this matter. And if I could make one last warning to the folks that want to applaud and things like that, it's not appropriate for this meeting. And uh, if you, um, I would rather not ask security to remove you. So please, please respect the decorum of, of this meeting. We're trying our best to be as polite folks here and give them the opportunity to speak. Thank you. We are a uh, immigration watchdog group for the most part. Now, what brought our attention to these municipal ID cards was way back in uh, 2012 when Michael Nowakowski made it public that. Um, that he wanted to create an ID card for illegals to navigate city, city services and benefits. So this raised the red, uh, red flag with our organization. And she, she already addressed uh, she, she, she already spoke, so no, I'm sorry. Uh, if you would like to care to address this, uh, we're, we're not going to. No. She already had an opportunity to speak. It's really unfair you know, as we're just moving through the process. Thank you. Uh, here we start. Uh, the committee, my name is Heather Hamill. I am here in opposition to this bill. Uh, a lot of the points uh, that I would have raised have already been said much more eloquently. Um, but I would like to take some issue, particularly with one, the very obvious racist nature of this bill that the sponsor of this bill admitted to um, and that individuals on this committee have also conceded to that the purpose of this bill is specifically to target uh, the undocumented population. And then you can step down now. Um, I, I don't want to lose my members uh, at this point, and I am, and um, so I, I, you know, I keep asking for uh, that you speak to the bill itself. So, no, I, I think you're done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Offensive, and I take it very personally, and that's why I left. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, and, and I don't mind you leaving other than uh, having you here uh, for the testimony, I think is important. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, uh, when we start attaching um, attaching meaning to a bill that isn't there, that's that's refer that's referring to you're impugning uh, the the bill sponsor. You're you're suggesting things that have nothing to do with the bill, um, and, and it's not appreciated. And about the bill, I do take issue, and the focus was specifically, as mentioned a number of times, about, in his words, illegals. That seriously concerns me. The other serious concern I have is that the city of Phoenix uh, was really thoughtful 
Uh, they did reach out to their constituents. Uh, they had their commissions involved in the process. They involved their law enforcement as well. Uh, so they really thoughtfully addressed all possible issues at the local level. And I take issue with this idea that we, because we are unhappy with quote unquote illegals, um, that we are willing to take away state funding for something that was decided, again, very thoughtfully, very methodically, by the city of Phoenix, by the city of Phoenix leaders, by their voters, by commissions, by several several organizations, agencies, and- Okay, if, we, if you can uh, uh, conduct a roll call vote, thank you. Representative Blanc. Absolutely no. Yes. Representative Campbell. Can I explain my vote, Mr. Uh, Chairman? Please. You know, I have no problem with the city of Phoenix doing what they do. They have the authority to do it, in my opinion. But it seems to me the city of Phoenix and any other city that would do this wants to have their cake and eat it too. You want to issue these uh, ID cards, and we know what they're for. They're obviously to protect the immigrant community, which is here in an illegal status. Racist. I mean, we, that term is a legal term of art. Racist. It doesn't mean they're not good people or they're decent people or they don't have a right to be here in some form or fashion. But the state has the authority and the legal right to take the action to withhold funds from Racist. cities that they think are not in compliance. That's the issue here. City of Phoenix wants to issue these cards, do it. They can still do it. It's not taking anybody's card away. Let's get that straight. What we're talking about here is Maybe the city, uh, the city of Phoenix will be deprived of a little money. That's the issue. And with that, I vote aye. Representative Grantham? Aye. Representative Hernandez? Representative Navarrete? No, and I'd like to make a comment, Chairman. Please. Um, so, you know, th this bill really does concern me quite heavily only because my district is probably the most diverse district in the entire state of Arizona with over 60 different languages. Um, not only that, but Phoenix is one of the cities that I do represent and the loss of shared revenue um, for the lawmakers listening to their constituent um, is very concerning to me, so I would vote no for this bill. Representative Payne? Aye. Representative Stringer? Aye. Representative Fincham. Chairman, can I explain my vote, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Pastor Royal Walton is absolutely correct. Uh, there is no such thing as an illegal person. Uh, and I think we all know in this room that illegal refers to a status, not a person. And I, I commend Representative uh, Campbell on his observation with that. Um, one thing that is missing from this conversation, which seems to be missing from the national discussion on this is why hasn't the city of Phoenix held out the olive branch to say if you're not here legally file an application with the INS to become a legal citizen there's a thought <laughs> if you want to be an American you want to live in America file an application to become an American that's an easy solution my son-in-law immigrated here from India. Yes, he's waited for seven years to get his card and he is about to become a naturalized American citizen. But he thought enough of this country to abide by its laws, to make application and to do it the right way. So I would urge anybody that's in this room that has got a status other than legal citizen of the United States, make application, get the process started. And having an ID, uh, quite frankly, doesn't that doesn't prevent somebody from filing a police report. It takes a lot of courage, whether you've got an ID card or not. It takes a lot of courage when you're a victim to make a report about a crime. So I don't really care for the misrepresentation that there's there's been with this bill. Um, yes, the city of Phoenix has every right to issue the card, but if it comes comes in conflict with policy for the state of Arizona, 
then it could have negative ramifications. With that, I vote aye. Chairman Thorpe. Um, one of the things that we always grapple with down here, I'm, I'm a true believer that um, local government uh, is sometimes the best government because it's closest to the people. And so one of the, one of the problems that we have to deal with from time to time is when uh, local government does things that uh, really conflict with uh, the communities that are around them or with the state. And so we're always, you know, it, I would prefer that we never have, uh, you know, to bring a bill before us where we have to be in odds with City of Phoenix or any other municipality within the state. Um, <coughs> one thing that I don't, I don't know if this actually came up during the public testimony, uh, but one, one concern I have when we're talking about um, um, having uniformity is does a um, City of Phoenix card um, is it almost uh, you know in, in being used uh, in place of something that the state might provide? In other words, does does if a DPS officer pulls over someone and, and they pull out their uh, you know, city of Phoenix card, does that give them some kind of level of uh, of uh, justification for driving on our roads that uh, when when we that person really should have a driver's license or some other? <coughs> ID. So I, I don't know if I completely agree with the idea that municipalities are, are uh, putting out ID cards when we have those same ID cards available at the state level and, um, and in compliance with state law. And so what I, I would like to say to everyone here, once again, I'd just like to thank everybody for coming out. I know it takes time to be at these types of meetings, and, and, and I appreciate the folks that spoke. Um, that uh, we're participating. Uh, I will have a, a conversation with the bill sponsor because of the other bill that's over in the Senate and uh, see if there's opportunities, um, you know, as far as um, uh, maybe bringing those two bills closer together and uh, making sure that, you know, some of the issues that were addressed today are uh, at least considered as this bill moves forward. <coughs> uh, the bill already has the votes. I, I am voting aye as well. And um, once again, thank you for being here. Members, with your vote of uh, six ayes, two nays, zero present, and one absent, you have given House Bill 2086 a motion with the director of uh, DOR. So, uh, yeah, they would need.